to Conversations with Deepal, and I am your host, Deepal Shah. Today, we're talking about what your body is telling you through symptoms. Does your body have deeper messages for you, and are you looking only on the surface? I am so excited to be here, and for those of you who are joining today's episode, thank you, and please do connect with me with your questions and comments, as I will be taking callers towards the end of the show today. If you want to connect, here is the number that you can call into. It's 844-390-8255. Once again, that number is 844 390 8255. A lot of the diseases in the body have messages because they all stem from trapped emotions. And sometimes we listen to our body and most of the time we don't. Some of you who are listening, you can go back to the first episode and listen to the episode on what your body is saying through signals and symptoms. It is that very first episode. And, you know, as we go through this, I, uh, each episode, I love to talk to you more and more and dive deeper and deeper into your systems and your glands and your organs and your, like every piece of you, not only the physical, but also the spiritual aspect of you and how everything comes together to make this body what it is. And as we evolve our culture, if you look at it now in modern times, we're eating healthier, we're exercising, we're trying to be more mindful, live in the now, trying all these self-improvement, you know, reading all these books on how can we be better and reduce the stress in our life. However, I hear it all the time where people will come to me and say, that the doctor gave them pills for their ailment or disease or discomfort or pain. And some of us will take it. And then some of us are like, no, I'm not taking medication. I don't want to put that in my body. But how many of you out there find that to be an easy fix? It's, yeah, it is easy to pop a pill. But if you really think about it, what is the pill? What is the process of that pill going through your body? Where, how is it processing it? How is it metabolizing? How is it affecting the organs and the glands? And let's face it, guys, look at the side effects. Have you ever read the side effects? Those are, that's a longer list than what you're actually taking the medication for. My 11-year-old, um, she dies laughing when she sees the commercial. She's like, mom, this makes no sense. This uh, Zofran commercial says that it's supposed to help with drowsiness, but yet it's causing dizziness. Isn't that the same thing? <laughs> so yes, it is. We, there are a lot more side effects and a lot more places where the body, where those pills are affecting the body. And then we have to go in and fix those things, right? So it kind of becomes the snowball effect within your body. So you can't always go to a pill. There's got to be some underlying reason and another solution to health issues. Now, if you want to be in control of your health, this is the time, folks, because it's too easy, again, for doctors to get you out of their hair and say, here's what I want you to take for the rest of your life, okay? There's a lot more diseases. There's a lot more diseases within the body than I have ever seen before. So before we dive into today's topic of how stress is causing your diseases and diseases, I want to take this time 
to give you a little bit of background about myself. Because I want you to understand that that today's episode, as we talk about stress, it is an emotional, it is a psychological, that mental aspect, it is a spiritual aspect. All of these, there's many, many layers to stress. And so let me go ahead and introduce myself to people who do not know me. My name is Deepal, and I help people around the world heal their chronic and acute health issues as a medical intuitive, coach, and teacher. I love doing what I'm doing. Before, I was in the pharmaceutical industry, pushing medication. I did that for like 12 years. And now I'm pushing energy healing. What a a 180, right? (laughs) What got me on this path is because I myself had health issues and a lot of them, from three different kinds of digestive issues to emotional issues that were almost unbearable for my family. This is when I tuned into energy healing, which I had never heard of before. And I was, I guess you could say I was skeptical about it. But I started to open myself up because I was running up against a wall. I went to the chiropractor thinking that was a natural way of healing. I went to um, a naturopath. I went to a homeopath. I have tried so many things out there that I just kept banging into the wall. And that's what it felt like. And maybe you're feeling that way too. So I decided to turn into energy healing and I just found it so profound and beautiful, not realizing that even in physics, when I studied physics, everything is energy. So how come I didn't think of my body as an energy and that I can do and tell what my body, you know, tell my body what to do? So this is where I had an awakening and I created my own modality called quantum body awakening. And you can check that out at anandaforlife.com or info. And if you would like to become an energy healer, this is a great place to check out what I'm teaching because you'll see that I've done so many classes And, you know, I started to realize that what works for people and how you can actually work with energy, but yet not create beliefs, okay? Everything has its beliefs, right? I do not like beliefs because then it makes me feel like I'm part of some group that there's no flexibility. But I want you to realize with your body, you have flexibility. It's energy. It's flexible. It could go and bend any way you want it to bend. So again, if you're just joining us, you can catch and listen and download this episode along with my other episodes at anandaforlife.com under the podcast page, or you could call in today and connect with me at 844-390-8255. I would love to connect and hear from you. So let me give you my standard disclaimer for today. Before we really dive in, I am not a doctor or a psychologist, not diagnosing or prescribing. Anything I share here is based on intuitive observation and or experience. Medical intuition is not meant to replace medical advice or support. And I look at the energies of things on a mental, emotional, spiritual physical, and other levels. And that's what I report, whatever I see and what I have observed in my practice. If you would like a personal reading about your own symptoms or issues, you can request or book a private session at anandaforlife.com. So in today's episode, 
let's talk about how stress is causing your diseases. So let me ask you, if you're dealing with certain symptoms, and I really want you to pay attention to these symptoms, really dive into your body and notice if you experience frequent headaches. Notice if you're experiencing sleepless nights. Most people call it insomnia. What about your digestive system? Are you dealing with pains in your digestive system? Any signs of depression or sadness, anger, frustration? Do you get sick a lot? What about high blood pressure, high cholesterol? What about the most recent thing that I've been noticing is heart palpitations? Do you deal with diabetes? What about when you breathe? Do you take shallow breaths? What about your sex drive? Do you feel like that's low? Any fertility issues? And the biggest thing that you might have or notice or know somebody who's dealing with this is back, shoulder, and neck pain. Folks, these are all signs of stress. Your body is stressed, not only you, mentally, but physically. Your body is slowly dying. You're killing these cells. Slowly but surely, and some of you, maybe even on a faster pace. But today is I look at the world, it's happening a lot faster than at any other point here on earth. Most people don't even notice that they are constantly living in fight or flight mode until they are diagnosed with heart issues, pain, or adrenal fatigue. Do you even remember what mode your body should be in so that it could actually work in harmony? Let me remind you, because it's called peace or restful mode. And sometimes in my practice, I have to turn that switch back on for people. And yes, I could do it energetically <laughs> and remind you of that. You know, when you get a good night's sleep, how great you feel during that time that you don't even remember falling asleep. How we say to babies and children, look how peaceful they're sleeping. That is how we should be even when we're awake. Look how peaceful you are. But you might be thinking, well, that seems impossible, you know, with with everything going on in my life, I just don't have time to be at peace or work on my stress. I'm just going to keep going, going, and going, right? How many times do you tell people that? Yeah, it's been a long day. I just kept going, going, and going, right? Yeah, you do have responsibilities. We all do. But how long are you going to put that blame on your surrounding and your environment and all the responsibilities you have. What about responsibility to yourself? So right now, inflammation in the body, it is thriving. And that's what's killing the cells. You don't even know it. You may not be aware of it. And even if you are, you're not sure maybe what to do about it. But the next step in this phase is when you don't take care of the preliminaries, 
right? When something shows up, a small piece of that stress or inflammation shows up, it turns into something more chronic. And that's what I want to help you with. Okay, we don't want to get it to a chronic stage in your body. We want to take care of it before it becomes chronic or even more chronic, where it spreads like cancer within your body. Okay, so think just for a moment. You know, when you're angry, frustrated, irritated, this is a normal response, right? It's easy when your kids are asking for something and you're really doing something, you're in the middle of something, it's easy to get angry or frustrated and yell at them so that they just go away. But imagine what it's doing to your body. That response is hindering your body. It didn't bother them, but it poisoned your body, okay? Now we're unconscious beings. And right now, like I said, with the world the way it is and everything going on in our environment, yeah, we wanna blame everything. And we're drowning in the stress. We're drowning the next generation that's coming up, right? We're teaching them that stress and fight or flight is the way to live. But the World Health Organization, this is what they're saying, is that stress has become a worldwide epidemic. But guess what they're not saying is that you, this generation, need to do something about it. In, nine, in 2019, the latest results show that 75% of adults reported experiencing moderate to high levels of stress in the past month. And nearly half reported that their stress has increased in the past year. One out of 75 people may experience a panic disorder. And if we dive even deeper into the statistics, stress is a top health concern for the U.S. teens between ninth and 12th grade. So psychologists are saying that if they don't learn healthy ways to manage that stress now, it could become a serious long-term health, it could cause serious long-term health implications. Is this where we want our children to be? And is that what we're teaching them? Is that what we're mirroring? Because if we are, we need to do something about this. And where is that going to start? It's going to start from you and me, right? I once was trying to get meditation into schools in our town of Morrisville, North Carolina. And it's a small town, not too small, but small. It's not a city. Um, and it's interesting. One day I was talking to this lady and I was, and she's a teacher and I was talking to her and I said, oh, you know, I would love to um, do some meditation in your school. Is there somebody that I could speak with? You know, I want to teach kids how to meditate, how to calm their nervous system, how to calm down and relax, right? And she said, uh, oh no, um, you know what? I, I, it's a Christian school. And I said, oh, well, meditation is not a religion, right? And so she responded, yeah, yeah, they, they wouldn't do that. So it's amazing to me how people respond when we're trying to help the community. And rather than saying, yeah, let me go ahead and put you in touch with so-and-so and just take it from there, right? She decided to make that decision for the school and the kids. And that's unfortunate. Because now some of, my, um, some of the teachers at my um, older child's school are using meditation. They are having the kids meditate for 10 minutes 
And I don't care if it's, uh, you know, what kind of meditation it is. It's a form of relaxation to where they're just quiet for 10 minutes. And yeah, that's meditation. So I'm glad that teachers are taking that stance, even though they're not having a professional come in or having a, um, you know, an after school group a meditation school group, which that would just be amazing. I would love to do that. They have so many organizations. And as I'm walking through the school, I was telling my daughter, ooh, I would love to have a meditation one, you know? But, you know, even companies I recognize are starting to adapt to having quiet spaces for people, for their employees to even take naps or meditate, whatever they need to do to de-stress. I looked at the statistics <laughs> for that too. And 80% of workers feel stress on their job. And maybe you could relate to that. You know, every day you go into work, how stressed do you feel? Or how do you feel when people around you are stressed? Do you take on their energy? Do you take on their stress? Before you know it, you're feeling stressed when you weren't feeling stressed, right? And they need help. Everyone needs help. 42% that they need help in de-stressing and finding ways to do so. So I want to know what causes stress in your life? You know, every day as I'm going through life, meeting people, watching people, I love people watching. So I don't know who doesn't, you know, if you're sitting at the mall or wherever, you know, um, it's fun to watch people. But I always wonder as I'm watching people, what is their stress? In my own practice, that is like the number one thing that causes people's ailments. That's where it all starts. And here's what they stress about. They stress about the fact that they can't lose weight. They stress about their current health issues. They stress about the addictions they have. They stress about the fact that they can't keep a relationship, not only a personal one, but within family members, or even people, other people. They stress that they want to get out of a relationship with their spouses, <laughs> mainly. They stress about being stuck in traffic. They stress about being stuck in a job. They stress that their kids don't listen or their husband's a narcissist or they are taking care of a loved one who's been sick for years. These are the stresses of our lives because we've created them. You know, and I could go on and on and on, but I want you to recognize your stress and I want you to make a list of the stresses in your life and then realize, okay, what is happening here? What am I doing? What could I let go? Why do I feel so stressed about this? Realistically, what I see is this, the reason that you're stressed is because life is not happening your way. Whether you're rich or whether you're poor, you have stress and you're looking for ways to de-stress. But you're stressed because life is not happening your way. We have all these expectations in everything we do in life. Again, think about your life, your stresses, and your expectations behind those stresses. So this is a great example. When you go to the grocery store, and you want to cook a nice meal for your family that evening, what do you have that you're expecting to find at the grocery store? 
What kind of expectations do you have? What kind of experience do you want at the grocery store? Is it going to be an in, a quick in and out? Are you going to find everything that you need? You've already set that up in your mind. Next time you go to the grocery store, take a peek at your mind, inside your mind. Okay, become aware of your thoughts. You may or may not find what you're looking for. And when you don't, what happens? Do you get angry, frustrated, and then you may have a bad day for the rest of the evening or afternoon? Maybe you yell, go home and yell at the kids or, the, or your spouse and nothing is going the way you want. I've seen this. I've done it myself. You know, I'll admit to it. <laughs> And I'm sure you've done it too. And you're still doing it, right? You never break that habit, right? And it happens again and again and again. And you feel agitated and you're, you're creating the same stress in your body just from trying to pick up groceries. So expectations, our expectations are too high. Look at your expectations. Things are not going your way. And that's what's causing misery and stress. You have expectations, you have desires, you have all these things. And you may feel that life in general, it just sucks no matter which way you see it. Because you're not seeing it in a positive way. And everything that comes to you, you're not seeing it positively. You're always finding yourself judging or criticizing or negative talking, right? So it all boils down to you. Your perception and how you see your life and the things you have to do, the processes in life, it's all about perception. And if you change your perception, imagine what that would do to your stress level. Imagine what's possible. Imagine going into that grocery store. You may already know that you may not find everything that you need. You, need. you may already set up, okay, well, maybe everything, I won't just run in and out. It's okay if you run into these little bumps in your path. Because guess what? Those bumps and lumps and obstacles and challenges, whatever you want to call it, usually don't just go away. There are some that go away and some that new ones that occur. That happens. And guess what? That's the process of life. But we have to start changing our perception so that we can see the change in our body. And that stress level is not shooting through the roof. So if you're just joining me, welcome, welcome, welcome. Please do stay till the end. I'm very excited that you're here. If you would like to connect with me, please do so at Ananda for Life. Dot com And you could also call in today. And let me just see what that number is. Uh, just for a second. I think I've lost it for it is 844. Uh, let's see. Give me one second. 844-390-8255. Okay, so 844-390-8255. So you can connect with me today. I'd love to see how your stress level is and what we could do to de-stress you today, okay? I want you to connect with your body and I want to help you by doing a little bit of energy work, okay? So before we go to the phone lines, um, and what I wanna do is I want you to tune into your body right now. Okay, I want you to see how your body feels. And everywhere that you're 
holding on to stress, I want you to notice, is it on the right side or the left side of your body? I want you to notice, where have you trapped that stress? So breathe in and out. And what I want you to do is take your thumb and it doesn't matter which hand and just push that thumb right into the crease right above your lip, right in the middle. And just push it down and let it go. Push it down again and let it go. Do this a couple of more times. And notice how your body feels. And if you're not feeling de-stressed or calm at this point, it's because your nervous system is overtaxed and on overdrive and your, your body's not responding. So we need to work on that. Okay, so let me help you do that today. So just call in, okay? But let me share with you what's happening in your body if you're not sure. Like, why am I not able? Why am I feeling the stress and I'm not able to release my stress? Here's what's happening. Your hypothalamus, it's a tiny control tower in your brain. And it decides to send out the order. It sends in the stress hormones, one of them being cortisol. And these stress hormones are the same ones that trigger your body's fight or flight response. Notice when you're stressed, does your heart race? Notice if your breath quickens. Notice if your muscles get tight or if you feel tense in your body. This response was designed to protect your body in an emergency by preparing you to react quickly. But when it, the stress response keeps firing day after day, it could put your health at serious risk, causing lots of problems and discomforts within the body, just like the ones that I had mentioned earlier. So use that technique that I just shared with you. Anytime that you're feeling stressed, and it's a very simple technique, right? Just putting your thumb, and releasing it, just putting your thumb right between that crease above that upper lip, right in the middle, just push down very gently and release it. Push down, just like this, and release it. Notice how that feels. Stress is a natural response. And everyone expresses stress from time to time. They express it differently. But if you're expressing stress, that means you're showing it on the outside. But what is happening on the inside? What about the impressions that stress is making within you? How's that going for you? You might be carrying stress around like you do a newborn. And that's an issue. So if that is you, please 
do get some help and do use the technique that I've shared with you today. And if you'd like to connect with me, you can do so at anandaforlife.com. There are many different things that I have that you can take advantage of, such as my meditation MP3. You can also do my Stress No More MP3. These are all audios that you can listen to to de-stress your body and bring it back into harmony because the energies are infused within each and every one of these audios. So just go to the MP3 page when you go to anandaforlife.com. Now we talk about chronic stress and you know we talked about expectations and perceptions but here's another thing I want you to think about, and that is deprivation. So to me, one of the other reasons why stress occurs in the body, why you feel stressed is because you're deprived of something. Stress and deprivation do go hand in hand, right? We talked about desires, but why do you have desires? Because you, you feel deprived in your life. You have those wants and needs, right? So every day as humans, you want certain things in your life. You want to achieve more. You want to be better than others. You want to win the Pulitzer Prize. You want to win all those awards at work. You want to be the best mom or dad. You want to be the best doctor, right? Whatever it is, you have desires. You have a to-do list. And you have to meet expectations. So... These things are all, again, natural responses and expressions of your body and your mind. However, when it manifests as stress in your body, that becomes chronic and it becomes an obsession. Okay, are you obsessed about your deprivation? It's like being thirsty, okay? <laughs> First, it starts out like, oh, I'm thirsty. You know, I feel like my mouth is dry. Then a few minutes go by and you're like, gosh, I'm really thirsty. And then another few minutes go by and you're thinking, I'm dying of thirst. Then you're almost huffing and puffing like a dog with your tongue stuck out going, gosh, I'm thirsty and I don't have any water. <laughs> and you're obsessing and obsessing over this. So how many of you do this? Is it worth obsessing? Because that obsession has already started that stress factor because now you're looking for water, God, you're thirsty, you're going to die, right? <laughs> you could spend hours thinking about how thirsty you are, right? So, you know, let's take another situation. In your life, maybe a more serious situation where you get into a fight with a spouse. How much time do you spend thinking about a fight that you had yesterday? You may look spaced out because you haven't, you know, come back to each other and, and resolved the issue because you think you're right, he thinks he's right. You know, you're just not there. You're just spaced out. You're somewhere else. You're angry. And you show this. You share this with the world around you. 
So maybe it takes you two, three days, whatever it may be. But this situation has caused stress in your Is it worth it for your body to go through all of that? You know, we poison our body little by little, not just with food, with processed food, but with our thoughts, our perceptions. And I recently had this, um, this gentleman 45 years old, who had a heart attack on the streets of downtown Charlotte. How common are heart attacks? And the reason I bring up heart attacks is because I'm seeing this so much more heart problems because of the stress that's coming in or how we're dealing with stress or how because of how we're dealing with our environment. And that's causing issues with our heart because we have emotions attached to them. Okay, I had another family member who's 19 year old passed from a heart attack. There are so many stories like this where young people are dying because their heart cannot withstand the stress. And you may know a few people that have passed because of a heart attack. So imagine how much stress is in their lives. And if you're not taking care of your stress today, this could be you too. So I'm sharing with you some preventative methods that you could do to help reduce your stress. You know, all the stress that the heart takes on, it's just grabbing on to that heart space. And so before it kills you, please do grab my Stress No More MP3 from anandaforlife.com. Just go to the MP3 page and start meditating, guys. Meditation. I know some of you may be saying, gosh, meditation is too tough for me. I can't quiet my mind. Again, stop creating these limiting beliefs about it before you try it, okay? You're on this life journey to find peace and how are you gonna find it if you can't go within and figure out what's causing that restlessness? Because ever since you were born, most likely you've been working with stress rather than peace, and now you're trying to go and find peace. And you may not even know what it looks like, even if it hit you in the face or in the heart space. <laughs> so give your body a chance to release that stress because you're holding on to it too tight. Because imagine what freedom would feel like. Just take this moment and close your eyes. If you're not driving, close your eyes. If you're driving, please come back to this episode at anandaforlife.com and you can play it and download it later. But please do not close your eyes right at this moment. So close your eyes. If you're at home or in a quiet space, And I want you to tell yourself, I am well, I am at peace, and I want you to say it out loud. And take a nice deep breath in and say it again as you breathe out. I am well, I am at peace. Take a nice deep breath in and a nice breath out. Notice your breath. Notice if you're taking shallow breaths or deeper breaths. 
So when you take shallow breaths, it may keep some of that energy stuck in your body. So we want to release it by taking deeper breaths. So put your hands up, facing up, okay? Your palms facing up. Put them on your lap. Close your eyes again if you open them. And take a deeper breath. Fill up your lungs, fill up your belly, just like a little baby. Imagine a little baby sleeping. Peaceful, right? Now tell yourself, I am well, I am at peace. Feel the shift. And now you can open your eyes and notice how you feel. There's, you know, when I look at children and yes, I see them playing and jumping around and twirling in the playground or at home. And they don't seem to be stressed at all. How did we forget to play and twirl and jump? It's time to play again. We need to bring that back into humanity. Otherwise, we're just going to be these miserable beings. So I want you to find balance and alignment in your life. You do not need to go to the gym to do that. You need to go within to do that. So I'll tell you that if you're not meditating, you need to start here and now. Do yourself a favor and go inwards and clear the crap that you're holding on to out because you, you will be so much better. Your body will thank you. And again, if you don't know how to meditate, let me teach you. I have this amazing, amazing meditation replay on my website at anandaforlife.com, where you could also re-listen to this episode and other episodes. Each one of the episodes has a healing, a process, that helps you get through life and helps to heal your body. Meditation, 20 minutes a day, that can help you so much throughout your entire life, throughout your day, every moment, how you respond to, to, to your responsibilities. Right? What is responsibility? If you really break it down, what is responsibility? Break it into two syllables. Response and ability. Your ability to respond. What is that in life? Keep that in mind with everything that you come across. How do I want to respond? And do I want to poison my body before you respond a certain way? Meditation has been scientifically proven to alleviate stress. So I will not quit emphasizing how important meditation is. And how much I want you to meditate. So do yourself a favor, go inwards. You have to train your mind to be more open and less reactive to the stressors in life because they're always going to be there. And that's what I want to leave you with is just thinking about your response to your stressors in life through the processes of life, through your journey in life. 
whether it's in your career, in your family, in your relationships, in college, in your finances, even in traffic. <laughs> Before these things start to accumulate in your body. So we need to combat the combat those stresses, guys. And if you know others that are dealing with this, please do share this episode with them. Because even doctors seem to have a hard time teaching you how to manage, manage your stress. Only you can manage your stress. It is your journey to find your freedom, your liberation, your peace from your thoughts. It's not their job, it's yours. And that's what it comes down to. So if you are um, happy with this wonderful episode, I thank you all for being here. I want you to release your stress today. So please do share this episode and other episodes with your loved ones, do them a favor and get them thinking about the things that we talked about today. So do share this with the world and so that everyone can live a healthier, happier life. That's what I want for you and for your friends and for your family. So put a smile on your face today and every day that you wake up, because even that is a gift. Even that in itself, if you really think about it, it is a gift of waking up and going through the process of life. So notice how much your life changes after you try my Stress No More MP3 and my Meditation Replay audio. Grab that now at anandaforlife.com and just go to the MP3 page and you can catch all the episodes at, on the podcast page at anandaforlife.com. I thank you all for joining me. Namaste. Namaste.